Good evening, and thank you for joining us uh, on this special show on Cancer Care brought to you by IHW Council. I'm your host. My name is Anisha Nayar Dhawan. The topic for today's show is staying on top of your breast health, uncovering myths and misconceptions regarding screening for breast cancer. Every four minutes, one woman in India is diagnosed with breast cancer. Every eight minutes, one woman dies of breast cancer in India. It is believed that 50% of the Indian women present themselves for treatment in stage 3 and 4 of breast cancer. This perhaps partly explains why the post-cancer survival for women with breast cancer is only about 60% in Indian women as compared to 80 to 90% in Western countries. Lack of knowledge and ignorance is the key reason for late diagnosis of breast cancer. Late diagnosis in most cases leads to poor outcomes. And you know what? This is the most heartbreaking aspect of this disease as this is a screenable cancer. Almost all of the Western countries have adopted universal breast screening programs using mammograms, which helps in quick diagnosis and treatment. Can this be replicated in a developing country like India, which has limited financial and medical resources? If not, Will Indian women continue to suffer from late diagnosis and poor prognosis? What are the cost-effective methods of breast cancer screening that can be executed at scale in India? Today, we have experts joining us who will explain all aspects of breast cancer and the proactive steps we can take to catch it early and improve the chance of cure and a better life. So please welcome our esteemed panelists. Please welcome Dr. Rakudan Pilasarati, Director and Consultant Surgeon, Kim's Usha Lakshmi Center for Breast Diseases. Dr. Roshina Ahmed, Senior Consultant Surgeon, Data Medical Center, Kolkata. Dr. Ekta Wala, Consultant Medical Oncologist, Medi Square Super Specialty Hospital and Research Institute. Dr. Ravi Jaiswal, Consultant Medical Oncologist, Care Hospital, Raipur, Chhattisgarh. And Ms. Niti Lekha Chhapra, Founder and President of NGO Yes to Life and a breast cancer winner. A warm welcome to all of you. Thank you all for joining us. Now, all of us have heard something about breast cancer. But first up, I would like to ask uh, our doctors on the panel, just what is breast cancer screening? So, Dr. Ravi Jaiswal, would you like to go and give a shot at this? What is breast cancer screening? So, screening, to simplify, is diagnosing a disease in asymptomatic people. So patients who do not have any symptoms, that is healthy women. And in these healthy females, we want to diagnose a condition, which is a malignancy. So this is referred to as a screening test. So they are asymptomatic patients. They don't go to doctor with any complaint, but we want to detect a disease in these ladies at the earliest possible time. So that is the importance and meaning of a screening test. Okay. Um, Dr. Raghuram, uh, when do we do the screening? Because you know, women will meet their doctors to different ages of their lives. Uh, most frequently, they will meet their uh, doctors during the childbearing, reproductive age because they will meet the gynecologist regularly, etc. A screening is a great idea, but uh, how will it happen? Because when do we meet our doctors? During the reproductive age, is it feasible to go in for uh, uh, breast cancer screening? Breast cancer happened that early in life. Yeah. Good evening, and thank you for having me on your show. So first of all, uh, I think uh, it's very important for women of all ages to be aware, to be breast aware. That is, if they notice any new changes in their breast, like a painless lump in the breast or a blood stain discharge, recent excoriation of the nipple uh, around the nipple region nipple areola region dimpling of the skin overlying the breast so any of these changes any new changes a woman notices they must not ignore and this applies to women of all ages and that's very important secondly when facilities are available and when women are able to afford this screening test which is screening by way of mammography has been proven to be the gold standard to detect breast cancer 
in the early stages that is before the lady or the doctor can feel it so that's the whole point of screening and it is recommended although there is a lot of uh, you know variation in recommendations in our country where the vast majority of women are diagnosed with breast cancer between the ages of 40 and 60 i think women from the age of 40 at least once in 2 years must have a screening mammogram that helps to detect breast cancer very 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 early so early that we can effectively treat the disease and ensure that they have good long term quality of life uh, also associated you know even after they are diagnosed with breast cancer and we expect them to succumb to old age and not cancer all right uh, dr rasheeda dr jaspal said that an asymptomatic patient the, the reason for screening of breast cancer is to catch an asymptomatic patient early on in the disease uh, dr rahul ram is saying that uh, there may be some symptoms of changing in breast changes in breast etc and patient should uh, go ahead for a screening or once you are 40 start um, every 2 years to have a mammogram so uh, should that be a standard for us post 40 women start taking a, a mammogram every uh, once in every 2 years should one wait for some symptoms to come changes in breast and then go for a mammogram is that called a screening uh could you clarify this for us asymptomatic no symptoms then screening or felt something amiss then go ahead and talk to your doctor is that screening well i think what dr ravi jaiswal said is the important thing screening actually means that you test somebody i wouldn't even call them a patient i would say this is a woman who fits into a certain age group who doesn't have any symptoms at all and actually doesn't have any reason to go to her doctor that's what a screening test is what dr raguram said was be aware as well as it's not about just depending on screening which may be provided in some sort of healthcare settings but apart from that you should also be aware of your symptoms so he mentioned two slightly different things one of them is exactly what dr jaiswal said which is women of a certain age start to have mammograms even if there are no symptoms but the important thing that he said was apart from that people should also be aware of any changes that happen in their breast all right aniti i want to come to you since you've gone through the breast cancer journey so um, how was your cancer detected was it just uh, a screening that happened and oh my god you just went to meet the doctor and suddenly you were told you know you have breast cancer or did you feel something in it uh could you tell us how it was like for you so i got diagnosed when i was 31 years old which i think is pretty young you know to be diagnosed now i see girls even in their 20s being diagnosed but we are talking about 2012 year so almost a decade back and uh, thankfully there is no family history you know so my mind had never ever wandered over something like cancer i had never ever done a self breast exam and honestly at that time even if you know somebody had told me come and attend an awareness session i would have said no you know there's no need that was the kind of mindset that i had and that is what i think almost all the indian women have here um, but i was lucky the lump was on the surface of the breast and it was just a chance encounter either while changing clothes or showering that i felt the lump and i thought that the lump was related to menses you know during periods a lot of us feel certain changes in the breast and i slept over it for two months you know i just forgot about it in those two months i just saw that it will go away i was so sure about that and two years later when i realized that the lump was still there i obviously knew that there's something you know gravely wrong and that is when the whole investigation started but you know even when i got the first investigation which was an ultrasound the report said that the lump was benign which means non cancerous so i just want to bring it here you know that there are times that your report may say something but if the doctor feels or even if you as a woman you know don't feel very satisfied with it it is always okay to go for a you know for a second consultation or maybe a second line of investigations in my case the doctor said you know since still there is a lump in the breast let's not take any chances and she advised me to get an fnac done we were very sure that it's not going to come out as malignant because we had a report which said that it was benign but fnac said otherwise and that is how the diagnosis happened hmm. so uh, uh, it's true maybe i is this what i heard that you said you 
uh, took two months and two two months became two years. Is that what happened, or was it mm-hmm. just two months? No, no. I said that I thought that it will go away on its own since you know I was thinking that it is related to menses. So mm-hmm. I left it as it is for two months, you know, and. Uh, okay. i had this strong belief that it will go away after two months when it uh, was still there that is when i consulted a doctor okay. and investigation okay. so uh, doctor ekta you would say that uh, neeti was quite uh, proactive and she went to the doctor when she saw something of was amiss and at 31 nobody would think that you know this is a candidate for screening you know every two years get a, get a mammogram done but she was 31 and many young women are being uh, diagnosed with breast cancer early in our country then what do you do is screening going to work because screening is recommended for women 40 and above so uh, yes as you rightly said the recommendation uh, to start screening uh, the age of recommend age of uh, starting screening is 45 or above but uh, nowadays we commonly see patients presented in a younger age uh, my youngest patient was of 24 year so in uh, in this high, we we call it high risk patients uh in some group which is called as high risk uh, uh, group we start screening at the earlier age uh say 30 and above so we screen okay. these patients so dr okay. so could, yeah. could you tell us what a high risk see neeti was just 31 and she said that she had no family so she was not high risk but who are high risk see yes uh, if uh, someone is uh, uh, someone does not have a positive family history then that is not sufficient to say high risk but high risk uh, uh, high risk group consists of uh, positive family history or yeah, uh, the carrier of braca mutation that is what commonly we see in the hereditary breast cancer uh, or uh, uh, some uh, uh, a person having some uh, uh, genetic syndrome like cowden or peut jagan in our language or uh, 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 there, there is a risk mod there is a risk model uh, the lifetime we from which we can calculate the right lifetime risk that if it is 20 to 30 percent uh, or more then this woman are called as high risk woman all right so there is a percentage which is the high risk for it dr roshan can i just your... add something here sorry yeah Yeah, uh, no sense since there would be people you know so many people listening to this so i just want to add because a lot of us thinking think you know that if we do not fall under any of the high risk factors we may not have breast cancer uh, mm-hmm. but just to share like i said that there was no family history in my case i got married at the right age i had my son at the right time i breastfed him so there is no known fam- you know no known high risk factor so to say but i still had it so even while you know the regular screenings may start after 40 but it is very important for you know the girls above 18 20 years of age to start doing their self breast exam and to be aware you know like the doctors have been discussing that awareness is so important so even if you do not go for a regular mammogram be aware of changes in your own body and at the slightest uh, you know change that you may see it is a must to visit a breast surgeon probably all right dr rishina in your practice uh, like dr eta mentioned there are high risk groups so there you recommend early uh, screening of say 100 breast uh, cancer patients that you see what was the percentage of women who were high risk in this 100 women that you saw it's actually not that high i mean if you actually look at the factors that are um that make a woman high risk the ones that have already been talked about uh, it, it's really not more than about 10 to 15% but the fact is that in india there are a lot of women who are getting breast cancer at a lower um, lower rate i think we need to be clear though about why screening is not really appropriate for those women because there are lots of different sides to screening it's not not just can a woman ever get this disease that's not the way to look at it uh, so for a screening program to work first of all a disease should be fairly common in a community uh, if you're going to advise that every woman in that community has some kind of testing but there are also a sort of limitations to the tests themselves so there are tests that don't work so well if the women are young because women young women have different sorts of breasts to older women and that's actually part of the reason why it's advised to start these sort of screening tests at a slightly higher age 
it's not that young women cannot get breast cancer it's a question of is it appropriate to screen them or not meaning should every young woman have a test for breast cancer whether she has any symptoms or not and i don't think that is very appropriate what is appropriate is for people to be aware you know i think uh, you know we've already touched on this but the awareness is more important at that point there's no point in doing a test uh, you know if a woman can feel a lump in her breast she should go and see a doctor that's not screening that's a woman with a symptom who needs to go and see a doctor who will evaluate the symptom but on the other hand screening means a woman who doesn't have any symptoms at all is it worth exposing her to radiation to try to pick up something first of all that may be very rare at her age but secondly that may not the test may not even be good enough to really detect it at that age that's where the problems come in with picking up the, with advising screening as such for young women okay so for young women it's going to be different and you know our demographic has such in our country there are many many young women and hence we are seeing our cancer at a younger age as well dr raghuram i want to check with you to you what is the age profile how many of those uh, in numbers would be between 30 and 40 and how many of them would be above 45 uh, years of age yeah firstly i'd like to uh, totally endorse what uh, dr rosina has uh, mentioned and i think it's very important to pay attention to awareness uh, as opposed to just only screening uh, that's very very important we don't have precise statistics on the percentage of women under the age of 30 and over the between the ages of 30 and 40 but we clearly know that the vast majority of breast cancers in our country present at least a decade earlier compared to the western world that is you know from the age of 40 to 60 is the peak it's not that women younger will not get and that's the reason women of all ages must be aware of any new changes in the breast and any new changes they must report to a doctor and i'd like to just also mention uh, as to what uh, dr neeti's experience uh, she has mentioned about fnac that is now given up it is not the standard of care when somebody with a lump or any new change presents to a doctor or a specialist there are three things that need to be done the first and foremost is to take a history and examine that's the first component of what is called triple assessment the second is depending upon the age to do a mammogram that is a bilateral mammogram and an ultrasound scan so if someone is very young we start off with doing just an ultrasound scan and if someone is over the age of 40 certainly a bilateral mammogram combined with an ultrasound scan and if there is a lump that is detected on these two tests that is mammogram ultrasound and clinical examination then under ultrasound guidance a core needle biopsy is taken so the needle biopsy is of two kinds one is a fine needle aspiration cytology which is called fnac where some cells are taken and it can be inaccurate there can be false positive diagnosis so therefore world over fnac has been given up to diagnose solid breast lumps so it is always a tissue diagnosis which is done it's not an operation but it is under ultrasound guidance we give local anesthesia and through the track a needle is passed and under vision you can you can see where the lump is and accurately a core needle biopsy is done this is called triple assessment so i think to those who are watching this program someone noticing any new change they must not ignore they must go to their specialist and they must have a triple assessment if they don't have the triple assessment i'm afraid they are in the wrong place. right so just for photos the triple assessment because um i would go to my family doctor will they do this or how does it go if, if i suspect something is wrong and i'm young uh, what are what are the tests one to see so triple assessment like dr uh, raghu mentions it's a standard practice throughout all medical practitioners so whoever has Uh, completed his mbbs knows what a triple assessment is so you need not be an oncologist or a cancer doctor to really do a triple assessment so your family doctor can examine the breast the gynecologist can examine the breast 
so anybody who does a medical practice can examine the breast clinically feel for the lump that is the clinical examination as well as the axilla and whenever there is anything palpable or anything that is suspicious we do a test which is either a sonography which is known as an ultrasound or if you are more than 45 years we do a mammogram because mammogram is not for someone who is less than 45 that is what dr raguram wants to tell us that if you fall into the age like neeti she is 31 so mammography is not the right test for her because the breast in this age they are dense breast yeah. so when you have a dense breast you need either an ultrasound or you need an mri to uh, really understand what is the pathology in the breast and the third is whenever the ultrasound or the mammography says that oh this lump or this mass could be suspicious for cancer that is when we do a needle test which can either be a small needle like Neeti got, which is FNAC, which is not entirely wrong to get FNAC, but it is always better to get a core needle, which Dr. Raguram says, because the chance of detecting a malignancy is higher. The sensitivity and the specificity for a bigger needle, that is a core needle, to diagnose a cancer and to miss and to not miss a cancer is very high so this is a triple assessment which fairly all doctors are aware of it is just that the patient or the lady should land up to a doctor but what happens is 70% of our population stays in rural area there's a lot of this hesitation to talk these symptoms to a doctor females they don't reach out i practice in chatisgarh you will not believe patients come to me with 10 cm 15 cm breast tumors when it is fungating it it is all smelling it is bleeding that is the time they they come to us and here we are sitting and discussing about a 1 cm or a screening test for someone who is asymptomatic so awareness is very very important okay doctor just now we will talk about awareness and stigma attached uh, in a while I just want to find out from you, Niti. Uh, you said you found a lump when you were showering. You slept over it for uh, a few days, thinking it will go away. When it didn't, two months, in two months, you had your diagnosis. By the time, what was the staging of your breast cancer? So um, I was lucky, like I said, that even without doing any self breast exam, the lump was on the surface, so I could find it. likewise the stage was one when uh, you know i finally went to the doctor with the lump and uh, it was a 1.8 cm lump so it was an early stage and a slow growing uh, lump uh, like slow growing cells and i remember in fact my surgeon told me oh you have a very good cancer and you know i was like, just wondering sitting there acha which what kind of cancer can be even good but then you know as we went through with the treatment and you know i understood more about it i understood that yes it was rather a good form of cancer but yes of course i mean had it been a fast growing cancer and we have seen that so many times you know that a lady does find a change in the breast you know but would just not go at that time maybe because i mean there are so many cases you know where lady said you know there's a marriage in the family you know i thought that let me wait let everything happen take, you know be taken care of and then i'll go to the doctor like doctor ravi just said you know that he's he's been seeing such big lumps and such big cancers we've also i mean under my ngo that i run yes to life we've been seeing so many such patients and it's a sad state and it is related to lack of awareness one two ladies not giving as much importance to their health and three you know especially when we're talking about a breast and it is a supposedly a sexual organ that also creates a lot of trouble you know because they are so embarrassed to talk about it to anyone else hmm. uh, dr ek a lot of issues have been raised by dr ravi and uh, dr neeti about the social aspects of having a breast cancer i want to understand from you Uh, you know the experts have told us that less than 40 of breast are so there is that a mammography doesn't work or uh, less than 40 you may not be at you know at a high risk of getting breast cancer either so how do we catch it early one thing is you do a self exam like we may have thousand things to do to do but to cut different pack karna hai khana banana hai ghar dekhna hai kaam karna hai ab kaun karega ye self breast exam so do you think a clinical exam uh, which you know women can try to schedule every year it could be a good answer to catch it only for younger women and you know why i'm saying is because uh, what is happening in at least 
some of the urban areas while this is seen as like an urban uh, problem is that you know many companies have an executive check uh, an annual executive check for their uh, for their senior officers and they, i don't think a cb is included in that you will get your blood you will get your blood test done you run on the treadmill do all kinds of tests but a cbe is not included in this do you think that a cbe would work as a good way to to catch uh, uh, breast cancer early in younger women uh, what was your last line i couldn't hear the clinical breast examination should this be the go to to catch a uh, breast cancer early in our country when you know women may not be aware they may not be doing it themselves so uh, so uh, american cancer society now does not recommend uh, uh, either self breast examination or clinical breast examination but what i feel uh, uh, over diagnosis is better than no, no diagnosis so uh, uh, for uh, unfortunately we don't have any uh, screening test before 45 years in the woman because the as we said the breast cancer is not so common in younger age group so th there is uh, there is no recommendation for this age group but uh, absolutely we can do uh, self breast examination and we can do clinical breast examination uh, at least yearly and uh, uh, if uh, one is one is knowing her breast then uh, she easily can appreciate any changes in her breast and she can go to nearby clinician either gynecologist or oncologist then one after clinical breast examination if we feel we uh, investigate uh, her uh, further and definitely we can help her with the clinical breast examination as we by clinical examination we can come to know uh, which if the lump is hard or soft or uh, uh, it is infection it is related to menstruation right okay dr jaspal you want to come in one question to you is who should be doing the cb test anisha ji the answer to your previous question that is age less than 40 years the answer to that question is no screening test the recommendation from screening for screening test comes after evaluating thousands of patients in clinical trial as to who benefits from this so let's forget about the case of uh, neeta ji she she was unlucky to say that she got uh, cancer at the age of 31 but if you screen a thousand ladies of her age you would hardly pick one person with such disease that is not the indication of a screening test please understand if you already have a lump and if you are of the age group of 30 or 35 you should see a doctor and the doctor will decide which test has to be done so just blindly saying that she's got a cancer at the age of 31 so everybody who is young should get a screening with mammography the answer to that is no only no, if no, you the have a not for mammography uh, dr jaspal i said for any screening people. test any screening so test even madam even if cbe you would say even if CBE, no 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 that is not recommended okay. because thousands of females have been examined and they have done trials and they found that there is no benefit see when you are of the age of 18 to 35 a lot of patients have some lumps in the breast at the time of uh, menstruation and if you keep on doing some screening test for that you would subject a lot of these patients for biopsy which is not recommended in a country like india where there is scarcity of food there is scarcity of shelter there is scarcity of treating diseases like tuberculosis you don't want to add this added burden on the healthcare resources of doing this unnecessary biopsies just to pick up one cancer early but whereas to counter this if a patient feels a lump in the breast which is growing in the size which irrespective of the menstruation persist and then that is the time she has to see a doctor and the doctor would decide that she gets an ultrasound and gets a biopsy so it's it's not one statement you know the the doctor plays a very important role there of clinical examination to decide as to which patient should get a test and which patient should not get a test thank you all right dr rishna what would you like to say on this debate because honestly a number of these uh, recommendations and tests are based on western uh, sample sets and uh, many of these studies have shown whether it's a self examination or it's a clinical breast examination there is no improvement in mortality rate of breast cancer whatsoever so what should we do forget about this wait till the 40 and only then get mammograms done and then say oh we were unlucky we got it early what is the way out so there are 
I don't think India should be looked at as one country. I completely agree with what Dr. Jaiswal just said. But India has people who could very well fit into a Western type screening program. And India has a much larger set of people who cannot in any way fit into such a screening program. That's quite apart from the resources that the country would need to have to run some kind of screening program. Even women who have, who have breast lumps, if they have mammograms done at, you know, not such, not in the urban centers, but particularly in small towns or in more rural centers, the quality of mammography or the type of x-rays that are considered a mammogram are more or less pointless. They don't tell you anything at all. So screening is, you know, a, we could improve the outcome of breast cancer by moving it earlier in the disease. Screening is trying to move it very, very, very early. But also we do see quite a lot of patients who come in with stage three disease. Now our patients for some reason are very obsessed with this word stage. They want to come and they want to say, what stage is my disease? And they think that's going to tell them all about how their future is going to be, which is not really true. But on the other hand, if we could move very late disease towards earlier disease, that would definitely have a difference in outcome. From two points of view, it's not just whether people survive or not, but it's also what kind of treatment is recommended for them. Women with early disease could very well have simpler treatments. I mean, women are afraid, you know, there are two reasons why women may not see doctors. One is that they don't want to talk about the disease, but also because they are pretty aware that the general treatment of this disease is that their breasts will be removed. So they're scared of the treatment as well. So if we could move the diagnosis earlier in the disease, in the history of the disease, in the course of the disease, we could make a difference because they would get simpler treatments. They might get less toxic type of treatments. You know, uh, removing a breast is a surgically toxic treatment. Chemotherapy is a medically toxic treatment. They could get less toxic treatments. And that could make an outcome, a difference in outcome. But that will come with awareness. That is not necessarily linked to the true concept of screening. Dr. Raghuram, uh, would you like to weigh in here? Uh, do you think in our country, a uh, nationwide screening program, like you know, some states have very good uh, healthcare infrastructure, say some of the South Indian states, uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, uh, even uh, Telangana, uh, the mammograms, chemotherapy, all of this is easily accessible to everybody. Now, Dr. Roshina has spoken of this, uh, Dr. Ikta has spoken of this, that there may be awareness, but there is fear of breast cancer, of social stigma, and that could be another reason women are not presenting themselves early. Another reason could also be the financial burden. So, uh, how do we do this? What will be an effective screening program? Once she's, you know, we are doing this awareness so that we try to overcome these stigmas. We believe that this is a disease that should be treated and is very treatable if you catch it early. So how do we come to this catching it early? Is it going to be a nationwide screening program that is going to work? Or maybe in some states it works? Or is it something else that will uh, that is required to catch it early? So I think it's a very important question, uh, but I think as we've all been discussing, breast cancer is a taboo. It's a closet issue. We don't wish to discuss about it. And that's the main reason because of lack of awareness and absence of a robust screening program in our country that more than 60% present in the advanced stages. And so if we want to ensure early detection, as uh, Rosina has mentioned, very, uh, you know, nicely that you know the whole emphasis must be early detection it's not necessarily screening that will come first and foremost with creating that much needed awareness about early detection how do you do it now i can give an example as to what we have done uh, we run a not-for-profit foundation called usha lakshmi breast cancer foundation and over the past 15 years we have been working relentlessly through a number of innovative and unique initiatives to reach out to the community, to engage with the community and to empower the community about the importance of early detection. 
We've started the pink ribbon campaign here, whether it's a pink ribbon walk or paint the city Kim, uh, pink campaign or various other initiatives, uh, you know, talking to the community, going to schools, colleges, so various other things. So that is one is creating awareness. The second is very important is screening. Now, as Roni, Rosina has said, India is not just one. You know, you've got urban India and you've got rural India. And we must not forget that 70% of our population live in rural regions. And the important factor here is, does screening mammography as a screening tool, community-based screening tool, is it effective as a community screening tool in the country? The answer is no, because one, a large proportion of women in our country, as we've already discussed, present under the age of 50, where screening mammography doesn't really work. Second is we have very few mammography machines in our country. We can't afford so many mammography machines. The third is we don't have qualified radiologists who are able to pick up these early cancers. So I think in urban India, where someone can afford it's very important for women over the age of 40 to go and present themselves for a screening mammogram at least once in two years. And that should be driven through awareness initiatives. But for the vast majority of people who cannot afford a mammogram, to those who live in rural regions, screening by way of mammography is not the answer. In those regions, I think clinical breast examination performed by a trained healthcare worker would help to detect breast cancer in the earlier stages. And uh, I can give you an example. I'm sure Rosina is aware Tata Memorial Hospital has done the uh, huge study on the benefit of clinical breast examination in uh, ensuring that cancers are detected early. And we as a foundation... Uh, over a four-year period between 2012 and 2016, implemented a large-scale screening program reaching out to women, particularly underprivileged women in rural regions spread across 4,000 villages where more than 200,000 underprivileged women underwent clinical breast examination. And the foundation trained these healthcare workers who are employed with the governments of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh to perform the clinical breast examination. And we ensured that there was some kind of monitoring, training the trainers program. And that uh, program is now uh, implemented nationally through the National Health Mission uh, across the country, along with oral cancer, cervical cancer, breast cancer screening across the country is now being driven through the National Health Mission by way of clinical breast examination. So uh, to, to, uh, to summarize, to those women who are fortunate, who can afford, and to the men also here who are watching this program, it is their duty to ensure that the women in their lives, whether it's their spouse, their mother, their grandmother, and those whom they know very well, they must ensure that they gift a mammogram to them at least once a year. And to the vast majority who cannot afford a mammogram, clinical breast examination by way of, which is performed by a trained healthcare worker is the way forward, particularly in rural regions. All right. Uh, Dr. Nidhi, you also, you also have an NGO that you mentioned and is working towards creating awareness. Uh, what do you see? Are women aware and still hesitant? Or uh, is this hesitancy going away? Because, you know, science has also progressed a lot. And now treatment is a lot more tolerable. Plus, uh, the government also is coming out uh, with health insurance. So for the uh, those who are enrolled in Ayushman Bhavan, they even get treatment for uh, cancer, breast cancer under the Ayushman Bharat scheme and not have to pay too much. So even the uh, financial burden may be reduced for the uh, those in, in the really uh, underprivileged lot. What have you seen in your, uh, uh, in your NGO? Is there awareness? Is there hesitancy? Because screening and CV is good. But if you are, on a, if you are hesitant, then how will you, you know, present her? So, you know, we've been working towards uh, spreading awareness for breast cancer and helping the patients, you know, in various ways, like emotional rehabilitation, financial, since 2014. And when we started this NGO, uh, women wanting to hear about cancer, the percentage was much lower than how it is today. 
I would not say that women are much more aware today, but they are much more open to hearing about cancer as you know, we thought it was a few years back. And even now, you know, what happens is that a lot of women say, you know, yes, I'm talking about urban population right now. So a lot of them say, you know, that, oh, yes, I had seen a video of a self-breast exam on YouTube, but they would still not practice it. You know, so unless you are actually looking at your breasts in the mirror, you're feeling your breasts, you don't really know whether there's a change or not. So just watching a video on uh, YouTube, you know, because you heard about awareness from someplace is not sufficient. But what we see is like, I take these awareness sessions, a lot of, uh, you know, women in my team are breast cancer winners. So when, when we give these awareness talks, we talk about our own experiences, the relatability is much higher. You know, then somebody just telling them that this is how it is to be done. And, you know, this is important because like I said that when before I got diagnosed with breast cancer, had somebody told me, you know, you can also have it. I would have just brushed it off, you know, but then hearing from people who got it at a young age, make you think that, all right, if this happened to her, this can happen to me also. And we after the awareness sessions, we do uh, you know, get calls or messages from a lot of people who've started to do their own self-breast exam. You know, somebody says that, okay, I felt something here. Which doctor should I go to, etc. So overall awareness, I feel, has, yes, improved. Uh, two, when we talk about rural population, they really don't know much about it unless, of course, that they've heard about breast cancer, yes. But many of them are as shy as not even touching their breasts while taking bath. Okay. I've seen this you know, during one of the awareness sessions in a factory where, you know, when I was supposed to tell them how to do a self-breast exam and I just casually asked them that all of you must have touched your breast and the ladies started to look at each other shyly, you know, giggling and everything and they were married. And, uh, you know, to the extent that I literally had to ask them that how do you even take a bath if you haven't touched your breasts? And, you know, they showed me, they said that we apply soap till here and then from here till the head. So I'm not saying that this might be the case with all the women there, but that there is that kind of hesitation and hesitation is not just in rural India, it's in urban also, but you know, the level of that hesitation or the way that hesitation presents is different. <laughs> but, uh, you know, now that we are working a lot with the rural people, once you tell them what it is about, they are open to get themselves screened. They don't shy away. The only thing is that, like I said, you know, before the session started, I was sharing one thing, which is a very important that I feel is that when we're talking about, you know, the underprivileged people, just doing a screening for them and leaving them there is not the right thing. This is how I perceive the situation to be. Because, you know, whenever we give an awareness talk to educated people, we don't check up whether they've done a screening or not because they can afford to. But with underprivileged sector, we make sure that we take screenings to them because we know they're not going to go, th go take a day off or spend money to get a screening done. And while even when we make sure that they're getting those screenings done, if somebody does need further screenings or somebody gets diagnosed, we tell them beforehand that we will handhold you. We will see you through the treatment. We will not leave you just after telling you, oh, you may have cancer. Now, please go and, you know, mm -hmm. see whatever can be done. So that is one point which is a very important. And if we and I don't say that it is only the government's responsibility. I don't believe that cancer burden is so high that NGOs, government, corporates, everyone has to pitch in and do their part, you know. So it is very important to let the, especially the people from underprivileged sector know that we are there with you. We will handhold you through whatever you may see while we are getting all of these screenings done and other things done. That is how we are working towards this. All right. Uh, Dr. Ekta, I want to ask you, now, you know, we, 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 whether screening works or not, which screening works in our country, the whole idea is to catch breast cancer early in our country. And uh, there are many things we've discussed today. What I want uh, you to tell everybody listening in is what is the benefit of catching breast cancer early uh, in, in terms of treatment, in terms of cost, in terms of quality of life? See, there are so many advantages of catching uh, cancer early. One, it uh, uh, decreases the cost of overall treatment. Uh, if we talk of breast cancer, if we detect in, in earlier stage, like say uh, stage one or stage two, we can preserve breast. The whole breast need not to be removed. If we talk about breast cancer, then in earlier stages, sometimes we can avoid radiation therapy. In very early cases, we can avoid even chemotherapy. Instead of chemotherapy, we can give hormone therapy, a tablet to a woman uh, with uh, uh, some group of uh, breast cancer patients uh, like hormone positive. 
and her two negative so uh, you uh, you decreases the duration of your you can you can decreases the overall duration of your treatment you can decreases the cost of your treatment okay uh, and what about the quality of life uh, uh, definitely if we detect breast cancer in stage 1 2 and 3 then there are chances there are high chances more than 90% chances you can cure your breast cancer but if you detect it a late mid late like in stage 4 uh, then we can't cure it but definitely we can control it we can uh, uh, improve the quality of life uh, in a stage 4 patients also uh, dr rosina uh, we had heard dr ekta talk about uh, some of the high risk patients and these high risk patients are those who have first uh, uh, first relatives be it mom masi sister who have uh, uh, had either ovarian cancer or breast cancer and may carry a um, a mutation uh, the bar uh, the bar mutation now uh, should these people get their mutation the genetic testing done and would this also then be considered ki- kind of a screening uh, a mutation testing a, a mutation is a damaged gene let's just put it that way it's a gene that's Uh, that can't um, do its usual function, and the BRCA genes that you just mentioned, basically, when these their normal function is actually to prevent women from getting breast or ovarian or a few other cancers. So if they don't work properly, basically their job is to repair the little bits of damage that happen as we go through life. So women are exposed to all sorts of different things, you know, pollution or smoking or. you know some some things in their food all sorts of different things and there is a bit of genetic damage that happens to everyone as they go through life and these brca genes if in a very broad sense they repair that damage as we go through life so if they can't work properly that damage accumulates as time goes on and a woman gets a breast cancer usually at an earlier age than they would otherwise be expected to get it but if you look at all women with breast cancer maybe only about 1 in 10 or at the most 1 in 15 of them is expected to carry one of these damaged genes so there are certain things about a breast cancer that make us think that that woman might have a genetic damage one is that she gets breast cancer early uh, one is that she might get some kind of higher risk you know some breast cancers are higher risk types than others some is the, uh, they're more aggressive uh maybe she gets cancers in both breasts maybe lots of people in women in her family have breast cancer but the majority of women actually have what is called a sporadic cancer which means that they don't have any genetic damage it's just something that happens so every woman doesn't need to go into genetic testing and so in fact every woman have a family those who have somebody in the family should they get it uh not for everyone if a woman has had breast cancer at the age of shall we say 65 and a low risk type of cancer then no her daughters are more or less at the same risk as the rest of the population so just having a woman one woman in your family even if it's your mother doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have genetic testing and in fact genetic testing should actually start with an affected woman in the family it's not that it should be used as a screening test in all relatives of women who happen to have had breast cancer so you have to start and look a little more critically at the woman in the family who's had breast cancer so she may have had a low risk type of breast cancer when there's a very small chance of her carrying a genetic mutation and if she doesn't carry a genetic mutation then it's even less likely that her unaffected family members would carry it so you have to look at the type and the age the sort of breast cancer the age at which breast cancer develops and then decide whether genetic can- uh, counseling or genetic testing is appropriate first for the woman who has breast cancer so also i want to say put this the other way around that every woman with a damaged gene doesn't necessarily get breast or ovarian cancer so it's right. not a screening test at all in that sense it's not looking for disease it just tells you whether you are at a higher risk than the rest of the population for getting the disease it doesn't tell you whether you have it or don't have it okay all right so we um, should when we treat women with cancer we need to be a little more critical and think about who actually needs genetic testing because that would lead to families being tested not to say they have cancer at the moment or not but whether 
uh, they are at high risk for getting it in the future. And that way we can advise them on various ways that they can reduce risk. One of which is screening. Okay. Um, I'm going to take uh, concluding remarks from all of you. We've had a great discussion about uh, screening uh, and about catching uh, breast cancer early. So uh, Dr. Ravi Ratti Saad, what would you like to say in concluding words? Uh, because uh, our attempt is to create awareness, uh, to break the stigma and catch breast cancer early. Uh, we don't want to make this a, you know, uh, uh, how, how are banana is called? breast cancer, breast cancer, breast cancer. It is a lifestyle disease. We should be ready. Anybody can get it. So what would you like to say to those who are watching? Because we want to create uh, awareness and uh, a positive attitude towards breast cancer. Mute. Age more than 40 years, everybody should get a mammography at least once in their lifetime. And if possible, it has to be repeated every two years. If the patient or the person cannot reach us, NGOs like Niti Runs should reach to these patients or these people at their local place. People who are less than 40 years, they need not be worried. But if they feel any abnormality in their breast, they should visit a doctor. Screen, screen, screen. Right test, right time, and you will live a long, healthy life. Right. Dr. Ekta, what would you like to say in your concluding remarks? Yes, as uh, Dr. Jaiswal uh, say, and uh, uh, apart from awareness, I also think that the woman ignores, sometimes ignores of their health. Uh, once, pa once cancer comes in one's home, then only patient or people understands its seriousness. Right. Because cancer drain a person financially, physically, mentally and socially. So take it seriously. Take it seriously, seriously and get your breast screen regularly. All right. Uh, Dr. Rasina, what would you like to say in your concluding remarks uh, on how, on what women can do uh, and what families can do? Why just leave this responsibility on women? What can they do to catch breast cancer early, whether it's uh, awareness, whether it's screening, uh, whether it's CBE? What would you say? I actually think a lot of women know that they have lumps in their breast. The problem is that there is this association that cancer should be a painful disease. There's this association between the word cancer and pain in people's minds because lots of women will come to our clinics and say, yes, I knew I, was, I had a lump. It's been there for six months, but I didn't have any problem pain. with it. Now, by problem, what they mean is pain. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that, that would make a difference is actually to tell women what is the thing that they should look for. And it's a painless breast lump that it should take them to see a doctor. That's my message. A breast cancer very rarely has pain. If you have a lump with no pain, go and see a doctor about it. All right. Uh, Dr. Ravidam, what would you like to say in your concluding remarks uh, to all those watching who want to try and understand that, you know, if this is a cancer uh, which is screenable, how to, you know, take up this opportunity? Because there's so many cancers that are deep-seated and there is no screening. The good thing is that breast cancer, cervix cancer, these are screenable cancers. So what would you like to tell the audience watching this show? I think the first and foremost uh, message that I'd like to convey in my concluding remarks is there's a fine line between advocacy and creating awareness. I think none of us here on the panel wish to create panic among people, much as breast cancer is the commonest cancer affecting women in our country, and much as breast cancer a majority of breast cancers present in the advanced stages. There's no magic bullet apart from the fact that we must all be aware that this is a major huge burden. Uh, the breast cancer is a major burden in our country. And although we can't prevent breast cancer, there are two ways to pick up breast cancer early. One is, as I mentioned earlier too, women of all ages must be aware of any new changes in the breast. And if there is any new change, that will only come when she is aware about how her breasts look and feel throughout the month. 
there's no set way of doing it whether they are having a shower or applying a cream if they know that there is any new change they must not ignore it and must report to their doctor that's the first thing the second thing is women over the age of 40 must have a screening mammogram at least once in 2 years and to the men who are watching this i'd like to once again emphasize that it is our responsibility to ensure the women in our lives get an annual mammogram instead of by gifting a sari for deepavali it's important to remember that we can gift a mammogram because the woman is the nerve center for the family if she is well everyone in the family is well so it's very important for the spouse to take care of the partner and to those vast majority in our country where uh, people live in rural india more than 70% where facilities are not there for screening mammography then clinical breast examination which is performed by a trained healthcare worker in collaboration with the governments uh, in various states is the way forward for early detection all right uh definitely come to you then uh, what would you like to tell everyone since you live through the journey uh you can you know perhaps talk to people to you know try to get the fear out and what you see amongst uh, you know the people you work with they may be uh, cancer winners they may be uh, women completely unaware what would you like to say in your last words to the audience so one thing you know what we've been discussing so far is the importance of awareness so i completely endorse it and i totally say that please be the hero of your own story love yourself check your breast you know if we have a small pimple you know you know it the moment you you know open your eyes in the morning that's the kind of importance that should be given to all the parts of your body so uh, you know treat your breast like that only if there's slightest of a change uh, you know please go and see your doctor and two please don't be scared of breast cancer because it is uh, one type of cancer you know that can be cured if diagnosed early and i am a living example here so if i can continue to live a beautiful life post the treatment so can you the only thing is to catch it early for which we need to be aware all right so awareness is key and catching it early is also key uh, for high cure rate for a good quality of life for beating cancer thank you all for joining us uh, on this uh, show and discussing about the importance of screening and catching breast cancer early so that uh, we can fight this disease women can fight this disease in our country more successfully than we are doing so far a big thank you to all of you for joining us and sharing your views with us thank you thank you so much thank you bye bye thank you to all for watching the show uh, this show was powered by astrazeneca do follow us on facebook to get all the updates on our upcoming programs till then uh, have a good evening uh, take care of yourselves uh, be health aware and take your health in your own hands take care goodbye and see you soon